welcome back to another how-to video in my Yoganuary series. So our challenge today is to work through um, upward facing dog and its variations, so things like cobra and low cobra, um, and I just want to talk about them and I want you guys to go off and practice them. So whether or not you're going to a yoga class, and you can take some of the bits that I tell you with you or whether or not you're just in your room and you're practicing your technique either way that is awesome and I just want you to give it a go feel free to obviously as always send me photos of your wonderful upward facing dogs and cobras um, but yeah so let's get started so we're going to start with baby cobra because we'll start from the bottom and work our way up so a lot of the time, obviously these postures are done within their kind of own right, but a lot of the time we do these postures as part of a sun salutation or a vinyasa, um, which is the flow that connects um, the movements. So we normally, if, if we're more of a beginner stage, then we will come down from our high plank, either to our knees and come down in more of a press up, or we'll come down through knees, chest and chin. Hopefully these things will be making sense to you. Um, so if, for example, you have come from here, so we're in our high plank, we come down to our knees, and we keep our elbows tightly close to our body, lowering down to work on the strength. Untuck the toes, and then this is where we come into our baby cobra. So baby cobra is exactly this. We are just lifting the shoulders and the head and the chest off of the mat. And a lot of the time with my students, I ask them then to take the hands off just to work on the strength through the chest and the strength in the lower back, just to test the balance. So this is our baby cobra. And obviously a lot of the time, if you are a beginner going to a slightly more advanced class and the teacher is working through uh, chaturanga into upward facing dog, as I do in a lot of my flows, Sometimes it's really hard to get from the flat floor position to a comfortable upward facing dog without jarring your back. So to get there safely, I would probably not go there, <laughs> if that makes sense. So if you're gonna come down through knees, chest and chin, or down through what I just showed you, then your, your best option is to go into either baby cobra, low cobra, or coming down. So we've gone from here, we're sending the knees down, staying strong in our lower tummy, lowering all the way down. And then we just have the option of going to baby cobra or pushing up to cobra. And so you'll notice that my elbows are nice and bent. They're really, really, I'm holding them into the side of my body. My fingers are really nice and spread. My chest is open and my shoulders are back. So here, it's a strong posture, it's not, it's not any form of like a cheat or anything like that. Um, it's just safer on our back rather than trying to go from all the way down here and trying to get ourselves all the way up into an upward facing dog, which unless, as you saw with my toes just then, you can send yourself forward, it's kind of quite hard and can be a little bit dangerous on the lower back. So, cobra it is. So I'll just show you that again. Just lifting all the way up, just here. So all the legs and everything are on the floor. We're not straightening our arms because that's way too much pressure on the lower back. We wanna stay here with nice bent arms. So some of the options, some of the variations that I love to do in a lot of my classes. So for baby cobra, I will just come to baby cobra. And then this next pose does have another name, but I always link these two together. So we go baby cobra, lower back down, interlace the fingers, and then draw the chest all the way back, keeping the legs on the floor, and then take a few breaths there. And then some of the variations that a lot of you may have seen from my previous flows, but when I come to cobra, I do a sort of snake with my head and my neck. So I come all the way up like this, and exhale back down. Come all the way up on the inhale, exhale down and then I do one which I call my sassy shoulders which is this so really circling the shoulders all the way up and down and obviously to do that to get that motion the elbows do have to 
come out slightly, but we're still thinking the whole time about keeping everything tucked in together. So they're just really, really nice things that you can add to your flows. The little kind of the head and the neck feels really good and really loosens everything out at the beginning of my flow. So I sometimes do that as a warm up. So that's your baby cobra and your actual cobra, big daddy cobra. <laughs> And then I'm going to talk you through upward facing dog. So if you go to yoga classes, then you'll have probably heard teachers saying like, you know, thighs off the mat for upward facing dog. And I think so many times as teachers, and I know that when I first started out and I wasn't quite sure what the actual posture was, I was having my thighs on the mat. And because I was quite bendy in my lower back, I was then putting so much pressure on my lower back. But actually, the upward facing dog posture, we're here. So you can see that pretty much my whole leg is off the mat, other than my ankle really. And I'm opening out through the shoulders, through the chest, staying really strong in the arms, grounding down through the hands, and then I can roll over my toes and send myself back to my downward facing dog. It's a really intense posture that. These, these kind of poses that might be classed as beginner, they're really not. You know, that's, I couldn't stay there for that long. It's, it's a tough posture to be in. And that's why something like that is part of a flow. And staying like that isn't something that you stay in for, you know, like 10 breaths or something. I mean, you could do, but I personally wouldn't. Um, so that is how... I do that, we ground down through the hands, we have our thighs pretty much the whole leg off of the mat and that way we're not sinking down into the lower back. I'll show you the difference of how I used to do this pose. So when I used to do this, I'd be like this, I'd be like oh yeah, yeah okay I've like, got my arms straight, but gosh that really hurts my back whereas if I'm up here. I'm actually taking a lot of the weight in my hands and I'm grounding through my foundations and then I'm able to lift my chest comfortably and I'm also then able to easily roll over the toes and come back to my downward facing dog. So there we have it. And you can literally today, you could, it's up to you if um, you're more of the cobra level, then you can just work through some fatty shoulders. Um, maybe send yourself back to child's pose, come forwards again, go up. Um, for those of you that are slightly more advanced, feel free to do five, ten rounds of just a vinyasa flow and working on that technique, opening through the chest, softening through the shoulders so we're not all hunched up, um, and enjoy. It's, it's going to probably be harder than it looks. Probably watching this video like, ah yeah, it's just an upward facing dog. <laughs> It's not. <laughs> well, it is, but it can also be quite hard. So enjoy your challenge for today. Um, I will be seeing you, I think, tomorrow, whilst I'm filming this. I think that tomorrow is the power yoga. F no, not power yoga. Tomorrow is restorative. Um, you've already had your power yoga for this week. Um, you'll be getting another one next week. But thank you again so much for watching. Share your yoganuary snaps with me all over social media, and I will see you again tomorrow. Mwah.